I'm just going to read a short section, two very short sections from the story Fear in Your Water, which is about Grenfell. And I have to say, I felt very heavy responsibility writing about this um, issue because I know how much it divided <coughs> London and how much I think it felt very personal to a lot of us. Um, I've connected to several friends who live in West London who had the Kensington and Chelsea Management Organisation uh, managing their building and maybe I'll talk about that a little bit later and it was quite clear for many years before this happened that there was something very very dodgy going on with the Kensington and Chelsea tenant management organization and when it actually happened it was a lot of people were in who lived in that neighborhood who were my friends were really not surprised anyway this is just a short extract the narrator is um, living in in the tower before the fire um, I had a girlfriend once and we lived in this flat together. She still checked in from time to time, but she was mostly gone with someone better and healthier. I just can't look after you, she said, crying. I didn't blame her really. Most of the time I could hardly get out of bed, but it did make me lonely to think of her happy with her new partner. You can stay here until you sort yourself out, that's what she said. But I didn't want to move out. I was safe there. Next door we're all right. Mrs. Obadike or her son someone sometimes brought her leftovers and in return I would feed their cat. People looked out for each other, were generally kind, whatever they like to say in the papers about council estates being rough. Then my ex helped me take over the contract and set it up so the housing benefit paid the rent. But now there was something going on with that. Letters I didn't want to open, piling up by the door. I'd been meaning to take them over to Mrs. Obadike, but speaking to people was getting increasingly difficult. Whenever I tried, my mouth became dry and sticky and I trembled with nerves. Thinking about this made me sick. I needed to get out, get some fresh air. Although the weather was heavy and hot, there were storm clouds looming east. It was hard to separate them in the haze of the polluted sky. I took the stairs only because only one lift was working and the hallway was full of builders. The tower had become like an island, marooned in a construction site, cut off from the world by a sea of scaffolding. Regeneration, what a bullshit word. They were just covering the building in some fancy tiles to make it look smarter for the people who had to look at them. Why should poor people live in a rich area? That's what they thought. But it wasn't always this way. This area wasn't always rich. This tower wasn't always stuffed and crumbling. As if it was their fault that the property was now worth more, so much money. I'd been putting off thinking about it for a while. But there were protest posters in the hallways and leaflets in the mailbox. One of the neighbours had started a campaign, but even he was sick with the stress of it. Every day it seemed there were random men in suits taking measurements, meetings behind closed doors, people from the council who now worked for the management and development companies. But what could we do? No one was listening. It felt like a siege. And then finally the narrator kind of gets moved on from the apartment. I didn't understand, it was too confusing. Peeping out through the towel, I navigated to the wet patch on the sofa and lay there, listening to the sound of my own heavy breathing. The knocking on the door was so intense that at first I thought it was just more construction, until under the towel it was hot and humid, and there was more shouting, someone yelling through the letterbox, and that's how they found me when they rammed in the door, hiding on the sofa with a wet towel over my head. I screamed when they touched me, and someone used my old name one that connected me back to the past and made me feel sick when I heard it. That's not my name, I said, but they weren't listening. My name was just a part of the procedure. Jesus, it stinks in here. You need to take that towel off your head. When I peeped out, there was a broken door and two men in suits and a policewoman there. Is there anyone else living here? I have a visitor, but she's going soon, I said. There's no one here. She must have gone out the window. I said this so matter-of-factly that they actually went to the window and looked even though being on the 17th floor, the window didn't open wide enough for someone to get out. And then they gave me that look, the one that is a mix of pity and fear. Where's my social worker? The man with the papers shrugged. She's off sick. We've got you a bed in a hostel, just till we can sort you out with something else. In the end, I took just one rucksack, some clothes and a few books. I was going to live under the bushes in the park. Later, out in the countryside, I would find an abandoned caravan for a few months. I would travel to the seaside, find a hostel in another town. I'd be cold and hungry and dirty and I would get very sick. Then 
in another town. I saw it on the TV in the day centre. All of us crowded around one of the volunteers' iPads to watch the news. At first, I couldn't believe how quickly it went up. There was something about the flames that was almost starving, the way they consumed a building. Those fancy tiles might as well have been fire lighters, the way they accelerated the fire. After a while, I couldn't look. Mrs. Obadike and her son, their cat, all of that waste. Everyone in the day centre was pale and shocked. Some of us, who had come from there, muttered about going straight to London to show solidarity. I pressed my nails into my palms, overwhelmed by rage. It just seemed so inevitable that of course this was going to happen. This disaster had been happening for years. The neglect, the carelessness, the slow, cruel hardening. And it confirmed what I already knew, that for those of us who have to swim in this water, everything is fucked and everything is on fire.